to allegations of historical child sex abuse at children's care homes in Nottinghamshire held its first hearing today. The investigation would examine the extent of any institutional failures to protect children in local authority care. Well, our correspondent Phil Brewster was at today's hearing in London and we can speak to him now. Phil, this inquiry has been a long time in the coming, hasn't it? Well, indeed it has, Matt. I mean, for victims of child sexual abuse and their supporters, it's hard to put into words exactly what today means. It's now almost seven years since Nottinghamshire Police launched Operation Daybreak looking to allegations of child sexual abuse centred around Beechwood Children's Home in Nottingham. Now, last year, former social worker Andres Logans was jailed for a total of 20 years after being found guilty of carrying out a string of sex attacks on girls at Beechwood Care Home during the 1980s. Well, today, the National Independent Inquiry into Child Sexual Abuse held its first hearing today in London, where it would spell out how the investigation would consider claims of institutional failures by Nottingham City and Nottinghamshire County Council to protect children in their care, dating back right to the 1950s. Well, earlier on today, at the hearing, after it, I spoke to a woman called Journey Cameron Blair. She was a lay inspector at Children's Homes in Nottingham, and she told me today marked a huge milestone. The years... I've waited for this, the suffering that I've also gone through with these victims, um, the children that I let down, um, that truth will now be heard and I'm absolutely delighted. Well today the inquiry led by Professor Alexis J announced it's looking at tens of thousands of pages of information to examine how councils investigated claims of historical child abuse, what measures they took to vet, recruit and monitor staff at these homes and whether senior management was aware of any of the allegations made and if so, what action did they or didn't they take. Now it's also announced they've approved 75 core participants. These are people with a specially designated role or interest in the inquiry. They can have access to documents, they can submit legal questions. Victims and survivors are also being encouraged to come forward and give evidence. But earlier today, one of the campaigners told me they'd actually like to see the inquiry held in Nottingham rather than London. People with mental health problems um, that have suffered the fallout of being sexually abused don't want the added stress of having to travel on top of that and give their evidence into the inquiry. That is one reason why I would like Jay to really consider uh, having this inquiry in Nottingham itself. Well, in conjunction, in conjunction with today's hearing, Ian Currier and Anthony May, the chief executives of Nottingham City and Nottinghamshire County Councils, issued a joint statement in which they said, we welcome the scrutiny the independent inquiry into child sexual abuse will bring to cases of historical sex abuse. We've been actively engaged with supporters, survivors of historical abuse, and would encourage them to take part in the inquiry. Now, the, hearing, the hearings themselves will be held in public. The details and the timetable of that are expected at some point later this year. But today, for campaigners at least, it marks it's very much been seen as light at the end of a very long and dark tunnel. OK, so for a the moment, thank you. Good evening. Welcome to Thursday's programme with Dominic Heal and me, Sarah Seal. Good evening. First tonight, the public inquiry into child sex abuse has unveiled the scale of its investigation into Nottinghamshire's care system. Today, local survivors groups joined more than 30 lawyers for the opening hearing in London. Among them was a woman who told this programme that she reported abuse in children's homes to people at the highest levels. Our social affairs correspondent Jeremy Ball was at today's hearing. What really happened in Nottinghamshire's children's homes all those decades ago, the police have been investigating for a number of years. But today, a new chapter in the quest for truth at the Independent Public Inquiry. Today, a preliminary hearing's been held here in London. We heard it's going to look at the extent of institutional failings in Nottingham and Nottinghamshire, and whether councils failed to protect children in care from sexual abuse and exploitation. The inquiry is chaired by Professor Alexis Jay, who wrote a damning report on the extent of child abuse in Rotherham. Today, campaigners from Nottingham were in London for her latest investigation. This is beyond our wildest dreams. You know. we, we, we hope to get a public inquiry, but we actually forced the inquiry to come to Nottingham. And you know what? That is absolutely amazing. Survivors are finally being heard, and they're going to be heard. And that's what they've always wanted, just to have a voice. Um, and hopefully past failings won't haunt us in the future. 
There too, a former Nottingham Children's Home resident who became a lay inspector. I couldn't prevent the abuse. Um, it just continued, despite me reporting it, it continued and went on even as I reported it to the highest level. How does that make you feel now? Very angry. It's always made me angry. That's why I'm here 22 years on. These days, not even just children's homes are a world away from the institutions of the past. But the public inquiry wants to make sure that all the lessons have been learned. Well, Jeremy Ball's just come from the hearing and joins us now from London. Jeremy, what are the next steps? Well, Sarah, eventually we're going to hear some really heart-wrenching stories. And today it emerged that almost 70 complainants, as they're being described, have now been given what's known as core participant status in this inquiry. First of all, though, they've got to plough through a mass of evidence, tens of thousands of pages, we heard, from things like police reports and disciplinary hearings. We also heard they've now identified... 57 different children's homes uh, and they're also looking at a number of foster placements too so a huge task ahead of them well clearly a moment many people have waited for what can this public inquiry really achieve well this is really about learning lessons from the past so that nothing like this can ever happen again they want to know the scale of any abuse the reasons why it happened were children believed if they complained were they simply moved somewhere else whistleblowers too was there a culture that stopped things they were saying being investigated? Now, today we heard that this inquiry is going to be broadcast publicly. Complainants are going to be given the option of doing that anonymously. And Alexis J also said she'll consider a request to move these inquiry hearings up to Nottingham. Thank you, Jeremy.